Why are smartphone manufacturers suddenly offering longer software updates? Android devices used to just get two years of software updates. But now, both Google and Samsung have both pledged seven years of updates for their latest flagships. Is it all just marketing fluff or are there solid reasons why our smartphones could just be lasting longer from now on? Let's talk about it. Android manufacturers have not been the best when it's come to software updates, especially compared to Apple's five to seven years of software updates. What's cutting edge today suddenly becomes this unusable laggy mess in just a few years. This is because smartphones are designed around a phenomena called planned obsolescence. Essentially, companies have designed your phone to be relevant for roughly two years because that's how long a postpaid plan lasts on average. So the idea here is after those two years are up, you're going to renew your postpaid plan with a new one that's going to last another two years. And oh, look, this new plan comes with another new phone. Convenient. But even when you look at it as a whole, smartphones have always kind of felt disposable, especially for how much you pay for it upfront. After those first two years or the honeymoon period as I call it, you start to notice a few things. Updates from your manufacturers stop coming, if at all. Your apps start to take longer to load or they keep crashing more often. And your battery life, you used to be able to get one full day of charge and now it barely lasts you till the afternoon. These little things add up over time until this thing that you've poured so much of money into just becomes barely usable. And if you try to go online or to shops to try and fix it, the response you usually get is, your phone is outdated, just get a new one. This planned two-year cycle guaranteed constant profits for smartphone manufacturers. But something interesting started to happen. Smartphone sales worldwide started to decline. The data didn't lie, we just weren't upgrading as often. It was now becoming more common to hold on to your phones for longer than two years, with the average now being closer to three to four years, some even managing five. And it makes sense because smartphone prices have been climbing over the past few years. So for how much you've paid for that phone, you would want to squeeze every last drop of it before spending just as much or even more on your next phone. Plus, I feel like smartphone specs have reached a point where even a phone from five years ago could still be used today. I mean sure, you have to get used to a bit of bad performance and delays here and there, but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be just a few years ago. And when it comes to bad batteries, you do have fast charging and power banks, so we do have options to keep our phones running longer. But smartphone manufacturers aren't dumb, and they've spent the last decade anticipating for something like this. And that's true software. It's no coincidence that in the last decade, almost every smartphone manufacturer has come up with some sort of subscription service of their own. There is money to be found in software, and the phone is now just a gateway for you to keep paying them through more and more subscription services. One phone every two or three years, or monthly subscription services for a constant revenue stream. Makes sense, right? Another strategy that these companies are using is something called ecosystem lock-in. Chances are, if you were to move from one smartphone brand to another, those services will not be available on that other smartphone brand. For example, if you were to switch from an iPhone to a Samsung device, your iCloud photo backups will be stuck on the iPhone since iCloud is really an Apple thing. And inversely, if you were to switch to an iPhone from a Google Pixel, all those fancy AI features are not going to be available on the iPhone. For years, people refused to switch from iPhone to Android and vice versa because WhatsApp didn't allow you to transfer your chat backups from one device to another. Because the iPhone used iCloud to backup their chat history and Android used Google Drive to backup their chat history, there was no way for them to talk to each other. And these are the kinds of tricks these smartphone manufacturers are going to use to keep you locked into their ecosystem. Because if you're not going to upgrade every two years, then when you do upgrade in the next four or five years, they would rather you stick to their device because now you can't leave. All your data is stuck with them. And if you do decide to leave, then it sucks to be you because now you lose access to all those services and all your data stuck in those services. 
Now the smartphone manufacturers are incentivized to keep their software going longer. They can't rely on hardware sales anymore just to keep their profits up. And if they do keep their software going longer, that means more users will be using those paid services more frequently and for longer. But these changes didn't just come from smartphone manufacturers. Throughout all of this, there's been one entity that's been working in the background to make sure that smartphones last longer so they don't just turn into e-waste and we as the customers don't just get screwed over. And that's the European Union. You know how Apple switched the iPhone 15 from Lightning to USB-C last year? They didn't just do that out of the goodness of their hearts. The EU actually mandated that if Apple wanted to keep selling the iPhone in Europe, they had to adopt a common standard like USB-C instead of having their own cables and their own ports. Because these would create e-waste when you decide to switch from one device to another. And that's roughly how the EU is trying to approach this whole situation, to cut down on e-waste because once these devices are obsolete, they just take up space in landfills. And another way they are trying to approach this is to improve device repairability. I'm sure you guys have noticed, but companies have recently made it very hard for you to repair your own devices. From assembling it in complex methods that make DIY repairs impossible, to just preventing you from getting access to spare parts which would allow you to do those repairs yourself. They do all this to force you to send your phones back to their service centers so they can squeeze more money out of you through those repairs. Or they are now the people who can tell you that your phone can't be repaired or it's too expensive to repair and for that price, you know, just, just, just get a new one. It's gotten to a point where Apple and Samsung hardware lock the components that come with your phone so that it only works with your phone. Say for example, you shatter your phone screen, you go online, you find a used version of the same phone with a fully functioning screen but the phone doesn't work. You buy this used phone and you decide you're just going to swap the displays. It used to be just this simple but now with this hardware lock-in your phone recognizes that this is not the screen that came with it and it starts flashing error messages saying this is not the original screen and therefore certain features will no longer work. Which is just stupid because hardware wise it's the same. It came from the same manufacturer but again they want to force you to send the device back to them so they're doing all this sort of trickery just to make sure you don't repair it yourself. That's where something called the right to repair comes in which stipulates that anyone who buys a particular piece of hardware should have full rights to work on repairing it on their own instead of being forced to send it to the manufacturer. And it also mandates that manufacturers have to stop nonsense like hardware locking their components to the device, selling the spare parts to make device repairs easier, and making all the build guides and tools easily available for consumers to buy just so they can do those repairs on their own. And unsurprisingly, there has been a lot of backlash and pushback from lobby groups and companies, but progress is being made. A lot of the smartphones that have come out in the last few years have been reported as being easier to work on and repair compared to the ones that came before. And Google, Apple and Samsung have recently made self-repair programs where people can buy the spare parts and tools needed to work on their own devices. And sure, those repair programs cost a lot and you can bet those smartphone manufacturers purposely did that as a last act of vengeance. But hopefully with the EU backing it up, the right to repair becomes more common and more smartphone manufacturers make it easier to work on your own devices, which indirectly makes it last longer. And it doesn't just stop there. Seal-in batteries has probably been the biggest reason why most of us don't keep our phones longer. Because once those batteries go bad, you're stuck tied to a wall charger or a power bank for the whole day. And this wasn't always a problem. In the past, if a battery goes bad, we just had to pop the back get a new battery, replace it, and it's good to go. We can keep using it longer. The thing is, it could be coming back. Early reports indicate that the EU is planning to make removable batteries mandatory again by 2027. Can you imagine being able to change our batteries again? Now, I don't know how they're going to do this, especially with modern smartphones. No, modern. Yeah, the modern smartphone. <laughs> Sorry, I've been recording for 40 minutes modern smartphones and their glass bags and their sealed in designs with their waterproofing and dust proofing but early reports indicate that the iPhone 15s and the latest Samsung Galaxies have internal design changes to the hardware that make it easier to remove the back and the batteries so 
2027. This is where we come back to the longer software support. Imagine you're one of these manufacturers who's been mandated by the EU to make your hardware last longer. That's a lot of time and money invested into revamping your supply chain, your build processes, your assembly line. And imagine after all that time and money to make the device last longer on the hardware side, they just drop the ball on the software side. It doesn't make sense, right? You may as well put in the extra effort to make sure that the software does as well. Plus, don't think these smartphone manufacturers have a choice for much longer. The EU are already playing around with an idea to make it mandatory for smartphone manufacturers to offer software updates for a certain number of years. These smartphone manufacturers suddenly offering longer software support are probably just doing it in advance before it becomes mandatory. So there is a third angle to this that's just a hot take from me, but I think the recent rise in AI has also pushed for this change. And that's for two reasons. The first is AI is powerful and it's slowly being shipped onto more smartphones. With almost every manufacturer trying to integrate AI deeper and deeper into their services, it's going to have more access to our personal data as the years go by. And at that point, with AI being so deeply integrated into your smartphone with more access to your personal data, you would hope that your smartphone is as secure as it could be. And one of the ways they can assure this is through regular software updates. At that point, it would be in very poor taste to let these powerful AIs on smartphones run loose when you're only going to support them for two years. And the second reason has to do a bit with what we talked about, these smartphone manufacturers trying to leverage the power of software. AI needs constant data to keep getting better. ChatGPT and all those other AI models were trained with data from the internet. But what about the AI on our smartphones? What if instead of relying on the internet, you could train those smartphone AI models using the customer's own data. If we think back to the smartphone manufacturers and leveraging the power of software, now they wouldn't need to invest so much in data sets to train their AI. The users are already doing it for them. The last thing you as a smartphone manufacturer would want to do is to just stop supporting your device and have your customers leave you for another smartphone manufacturer. Now, you've not just lost your own source of profit, but now that source of profit is off training your competitors AI models. Doesn't seem like the right move here. It starts to make sense why suddenly the smartphone companies are offering longer software support just as they start to roll out all these fancy AI features along with their own phones. Now we've talked about why smartphone manufacturers are suddenly offering longer software support and why smartphones are lasting longer but whether or not they will follow through with all these claims remains to be seen. We'll have to check in with them in 2030 and 2031 to see if they've kept their word. But I'm optimistic because with current smartphone trends and the EU exerting their influence even more, I'm expecting more smartphone manufacturers to start pledging longer software support for their devices. And we started to see hints of that where manufacturers went from offering just two years of software updates to now promising three or even four years of software updates. Fun fact, the longest I've ever owned a phone was two years and one month. And that was my old HTC One X from 10 years ago. I can't imagine holding on to a phone for three times that length. Now, maybe I could. What about you guys? How long do you own your phones for? Are you excited by these announcements or kind of meh about it. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.